Hello and welcome to Pock and Rob. In today's video, part of the series of Tracks of My Years, I think this is my second one, I am revisiting a subject that when I last did a video on this actually got a whole stack of views, so why not try and tap into that once more? I am going to be ranking my top 30 tracks by ABBA. Before I do that, I'd remind you to like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And let's dive in. And at number 30, I have placed the title track of their debut album, or at least the title track of that album now that it's been changed, it's Ring Ring. This is a great slice of bubblegum pop. I really enjoy Ring Ring. I... My number 30. And number 29 from the new album Voyage, a track that I gave a bit of grief to when I did my review as it felt like it was a codependent relationship and not healthy, but I've grown to really like it, it's I Can Be That Woman. I think this is one of the, the strongest songs on the Voyage album. Number 28 from Abba the Album, it is One Man, One Woman. This I think was a single in America, in, this I think was a single in Australia because they didn't like the name of the game. Go figure. But it's a really good album track for me. Number 27 is the single that they released in 1981 that stalled outside of the top 20 for the first time since 1975. Truly heralding the end of their chart dominance, it's Head Over Heels, second track on the Visitors album. Should have been a bigger hit, I really like the lyrical climb and construction that they do from the verse into the chorus. Number 27, Head Over Heels. At number 26, I have placed the track that was released directly before it and did hit the top five, the big hit from the Visitors album, It's One of Us. This is yet another example of their breakup song, but with a tight twist, this is somebody saying actually maybe we shouldn't have, and that they're now lonely. Number, tw number 25, from Arrival, I have placed Money, Money, Money. Once upon a time, I think this might have been my favourite ever ABBA track when I was a kid. It's quite musically quite dark and I think I've fallen out of love with it because I've heard it so much and over familiarity has caused it to tumble. It's still a great song though and it's a great vocal performance from Frida. Number 24, I have placed Tiger also from the Arrival album. One of the great buried unknown tracks from that album, real deep cut in many ways. Both vocalists on there are just in top form. Tiger's great fun. Number 23 from Super Trooper, I have placed The Piper. Now, my sister owns a vinyl copy of Super Trooper and has done since she was a kid. I remember hearing this in her room and not liking it. I think it's because it reminds me of that dark story, The Pied Piper of Hamelin. And that always makes me feel uncomfortable. And I think that's possibly how I felt about the Piper as a kid. I've grown to actually admire the song of how it skips styles and, and keys so cleverly. Number 23, the Piper. Number 22 is the last song that they released before Chart Dominance took over. It is So Long from Abba the Album. Why this wasn't a hit, I don't know. This, this is chart material writ large. I really like So Long. I don't understand why it was, at the time, their least successful chart single. Number 21 from the same album, Abba the Album, is I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do. Again, a flop of a single in the UK. Big hit, I believe, in Australia. But it's just great, fun, bubblegum pop, and there's nothing wrong with that. And number 20 from the Visitors album is one of their most obvious painful breakup songs, it's When All Is Said and Done. At number 19, I have placed a song that at one point was my favourite from Voyage. It's diminished a little bit now, I've heard it a lot more, and it's perhaps a bit slow. It's still majestic, and it's, it's probably the best word to describe it. It's I Still Have Faith In You, the opening track. It's, like I say, it's, it's kind of got that majesty that ABBA often put into their, their slower ballads. It's a great song. Number 18, we're returning to some more bubblegum pop for Honey Honey from the Waterloo album. Follow-up single to Waterloo, didn't do particularly well, but 
This is one where I think its usage in the film Mamma Mia has lifted the song so much. Number 18, Honey Honey. And number 17, I have placed I Wonder from the scenes from a mini musical section of Abba the Album. Now, Abba the Album is a bit of a mess. And that scenes from a mini musical is, is what best typifies that mess. But the middle piece, I Wonder, is absolute mint. Great track. Absolutely fantastic. I think, again, may well have been a single somewhere around the globe. And number 16 is the highest placing for my favourite track from Voyage. It's the other single, Don't Shut Me Down. This is like stepping back into the mid-70s period of ABBA, of the period of things like Dancing Queen and Take a Chance on Me, and it not feeling like they'd ever been away. That's what Don't Shut Me Down does. It makes you feel like 40 years has gone so fast because they haven't changed. Brilliant track, Don't Shut Me Down. Number 15, I've placed an instrumental. Now, they've released a few instrumentals over their time, and I really quite like Intermezzo number 5. But the one I've placed here is Arrival. Now, the first time I ever heard Arrival, it wasn't by ABBA. It was by Mike Oldfield. And he does such a good guitar version of it that it shows how robust the tune is. And as a result, I love it. And every time I hear the album Arrival... I look forward to its closing track, Arrival, because it's good, not because I want the album over. It's my favourite ABBA album. Terrific instrumental, Arrival. And number 14, from the album The Visitors, it's the title track. This is a dark, claustrophobic song, all about waiting for the knock on the door from the secret police. What a, a, a subject title. Very different from anything else they ever did. But... It, it feels influenced by some of the darker stuff from the new romantic and electronic early wave stuff. This is a, a, a really strong track, The Visitors. And number 13 from Abba the Album, and I know this was a signal in other parts of Europe, it's Eagle. Such a masterful piece of music that really does evoke the... the, the, the Sensation you imagine you'd get from the wind over your wings, flying like an eagle, high up in the sky. Absolutely great song, Eagle. It's just a shame that the album is a bit all over the place because there's so much good stuff on it. And number 12, from Arrival, Dancing Queen. Why? Because it's Dancing Queen. Massively overplayed. No question about it. Perhaps almost feels cliche that it's the the apex of floor fillers when it comes to a disco, but it's Dancing Queen. It's just a perfect piece of pop. If it wasn't so overplayed, it probably would be close up at number one. And number 11 is the track that, ironic considering its title, probably saved ABBA. It's SOS. They themselves are on record as saying that they were struggling to get the chart success in the UK, which they viewed as being the, the, the best indicator of, of pop success. And then they released SOS from ABBA the album. It hit number five. And arguably, as a result of SOS, we have all of the rest of the great ABBA stuff. Because, who knows, they may not have tried to carry on. SOS, such an important song in ABBA's history and an absolutely banging single. So into my top 10. Uh, at number 10, I have placed the only track on here that doesn't come from an ABBA album. It's The Day Before You Came. This is, I believe, the last track that they worked on together prior to the 40-year hiatus. It was released as a single, did absolutely nothing, and... Probably that failure as a single led to the further collapse of them as a band, which is such a shame. This is a, a quite a dark melody. It's, it's clearly, for me, influenced by things like orchestral manoeuvres in the dark and that late new romantic electronica stuff that was starting to come out. But it's such a good song. The Day Before You Came is an absolutely great song. It's not on Abba Gold. 
You'll find it on more Abba Gold. And number nine from the Arrival album, a song that has definitely slipped into cliche. It's Knowing Me, Knowing You. Now, if you're British and you are aware of how it's been used, after that title, Knowing Me, Knowing You, you probably went aha in the style of Alan Partridge. This is a great song which that Alan Partridge thing has wrecked ever so slightly. It may have been higher had it not been for that desire everybody now has in the UK to shout aha in an Alan Partridge voice. But Knowing Me, Knowing You is a brilliant single. Sticking with the Arrival album for My Love, My Life, number eight. One of the very best vocal performances in all of ABBA's canon. I think it's Agnita, but the, the purity of tone in the in that chorus where it lifts to the my one and only line is just absolutely brilliant. I think this was used in Mamma Mia 2. I haven't seen Mamma Mia 2, so I can't confirm. But my Love, My Life, absolutely great. And number seven is their first number one single. And yes, it's the start of ABBA. I know I said that SOS was basically what saved them, gave them their chart dominance. But it's Waterloo. Eurovision winner, the world woke up, the UK bought it in spades, and then we ignored them for the best part of a year. The UK gave Waterloo no points. Beggar's belief, doesn't it? But it's such a great song. Waterloo, from the Waterloo album at number seven. And number six is the song that probably more than anything else turned me on to ABBA. This was the early 90s, and it's Take a Chance on Me. Hit number one in 1978. And then ABBA were kind of ignored for nearly 10 years after they split, until Erasure in the UK did the ABBA-esque EP, of which one of the four tracks was Take a Chance on Me. There was no lead track, but this is the one that was on their greatest hits, because ABBA-esque shot to number one. And suddenly ABBA were in favour again. That EP led to ABBA Gold being compiled and becoming the second biggest selling UK chart album. And for me, Take a Chance on Me is the real key to the fact that ABBA's success from the 90s onwards was, was, has been as big as it has been. Take a Chance on Me at number six. Number five is another UK number one. It's Name of the Game from Abba the Album. Such a grown-up song. And, and that sounds condescending to say it, but this song more than any marks the, the transition that Abba went through from great pop hits, that is the majority of the Arrival album, into Torch songs. I mean, the name of the game is almost a torch song and the key changes in it are incredible. And if I played this on piano and it, you do have to really work your fingers out. It's a terrific track, name of the game. And number four, another number one single and it's from Super Trooper, it's the winner takes it all. Now, both parties involved, Bjorn and Agnita, have said that this song is not about their divorce, but you can't help thinking, how can it not be? It is the metaphor of a chess game. The winner takes it all. You've come to shake my hand. Sorry that it makes you feel bad. All that kind of thing. It's it's just brilliant. The winner takes it all. Number four. Number three. Another number one single. It's Mamma Mia. It's such a great pop song. Mamma Mia. And it's so different from everything else on ABBA the album. It was the fifth single. There are stories that actually they, they didn't want to release it. They thought it wasn't very good. And then it turned out to be this huge behemoth of a success. And of course, gave its name to a film. Mamma Mia, number three. Number two, from The Visitors, it's slipping through my fingers. Now... This is about Agnetha and Bjorn's daughter going to school and all of those years and the children growing up. It's just, it's like holding sand and just slips through in between the gaps. You can't hold on to these things, but how 
aching it feels sometimes. And now that my two kids are growing up and they're beyond school age, we send them at four. They've been there for quite a while, but the song took on a new meaning when I lived through that myself. Slipping through my fingers at number two. Which leaves my number one placing, like my number two, was not a single. It comes from Super Trooper. It's Our Last Summer. This, for me, is the perfect ABBA song. Absolutely brilliant. I think it's a bit shoehorned into Mamma Mia and feels a bit wrong and, and incongruous, but as, the, as a ballad about reflecting on good times prior to a breakup, there's none better. Our Last Summer from Super Trooper is my favourite ABBA song. So that concludes my top 30. Please let me know in the comments below What's your top five? Or if you really want to go for it, what's your top 30? What are the tracks of your years when it comes to ABBA? Before I go, I'll remind you to like, subscribe and hit the bell. And then maybe click on one of these links and go and see one of the other videos. There is a, another ABBA video where I rank all of the albums. You'll notice that in this top 30, none of the tracks come from Voulez Vu. No surprise, it's my least favourite ABBA album. I'll be back in a week with another video, but until then, thanks for watching.